At the Munich Security Conference, there has been some of a confrontation between the Chinese delegation, the US delegation, the Chinese delegation headed by Foreign Minister Wang, and the delegation from the USA headed by Secretary of State Blinken. Both have briefly met, and according to reports, uh, the meeting was somewhat frosty and very brief. China and Wang seems to trying to um, navigate a situation where they can constructively engage their partners in Washington in some dialogue considering the recent crises between the two, which really started around Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which China said was a red line. Pelosi went there anyway. China didn't do very much in regards to that. And then once again, around the Chinese weather balloon, which the USA shot down in their airspace with a fighter jet. Wang is trying to engage his colleagues in Washington by a so-called, quote-unquote, peace proposal for the Russian-initiated conflict in Ukraine. On the side of the USA, they're playing China quite well for their own neo-colonial global capitalist interests, because Blinken then responds to that uh, apparent proposal by Wang over Ukraine with some skepticism and then gives it back to the Chinese as it were by saying that he is very concerned th about China's relationship with Russia. Indeed China and Russia on the outset of Russia's initiation of the Ukraine conflict said there that the alliance had no limits indicating China thought it would go along with a somewhat dizzy with success type of military arrogance that Russia is employing. Blinken says at the Munich Security Conference vis-a-vis -vis China that he is concerned that China is supplying some military hardware and materiel to Moscow in its endeavors to, to colonize Ukraine, basically. This really puts China back on the defensive on the issue of Russia and Ukraine, and also uh, this is all to do with also Taiwan, which the West is trying to ensnare China through the route of Taiwan as it's ensnared uh, Russia, not least because of Russia's own arrogance and conceit through the entrapment of Ukraine. Also, Wang mentions that, quote-unquote, some some interests don't want to end the war in Ukraine. And really, questions have to be asked exactly who are these interests that don't want to end the war with the Ukraine, uh, Ukraine, according to Chinese Foreign Minister Wang. Because all noises from all leaders of Western states are saying they will absolutely not give uh, combat aircraft to Kiev in its resistance and defense of its own nation vis-a-vis -vis the Russian aggression and there's increasing noises towards some kind of engagement with Moscow towards some kind of peace settlement in the conflict. So Wang's comments could make sense if they were around actually the actions of Moscow which wants to pursue a war of annexation and domination against the sovereign nation and their neighbor, which is Ukraine. All of this points to China's deep inferiority com uh, complex between its two major global allies, primary global allies, one, should, one would say, a deep inferiority complex vis-a-vis -vis Washington and a deep inferiority complex vis-a-vis -vis Moscow. And this is clearly racialized as well as Moscow has a white nationalist leadership and Washington has a white nationalist, white nationalist leadership. Employing the framework of Mao Zedong, the revolutionary Chinese leader who, whose struggle established the People's Republic of China, and particularly his analysis of the new democratic revolution, it points to the fact that capitalist ruling classes that are embedded in the Western imperialist dominated global economy, as the Beijing leadership is, is unable to defend its own people and nation vis-a-vis -vis imperialist threats and aggression going forward. If we apply this to the Chinese leadership, it very much fits in terms of their behavior. They, on the one hand, do not seem to be wanting to stand up for its people and nation vis-a-vis -vis growing US war threats, and also is in an inferior relationship of their own choosing and making a construction vis-a-vis -vis the, their neighborly big brother in Russia. This makes sense as the Chinese political and ruling classes are very much embedded and in a junior relationship 
with their number one global partnership, which is Washington. 